Strawberry Fields, a satirical novel by British author Marina Lewicka, follows the travails of a group of economic migrants from Eastern Europe, Africa, and Asia as they try to make a life in Britain. Lewicka, herself the daughter of Ukrainian immigrants to the UK, is best known for her multi-award winning debut A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian, 2005. Strawberry Fields, her second novel, was first published in the UK and Ireland as Two Caravans. As the novel begins, 19-year-old Irina, a Ukrainian girl, is brought to a ramshackle strawberry farm on Sherberry down in the south of England by her sinister Russian trafficker Vok. He looked quite a bit like his car, overweight, built like a tank, with a gleaming silver front tooth, a shiny black jacket, and a straggle of hair tied in a ponytail hanging down his back like an exhaust pipe. Irina, an academic's daughter who plans to write the great Ukrainian novel, is naively optimistic. She is delighted with her first sight of the English countryside, the first thing I noticed was the light, the dazzling salty light dancing on the sunny field, the ripening strawberries, the little rounded trailer perched up on the hill. But Volk, who has his own plans for Irina, warns her, England is a change, little flubber. England is not like a new school book. On the farm, Irina is introduced to the existing team of migrant workers, including their supervisor, the 40-year-old Ukrainian woman Yola, who fears that Irina's arrival will disrupt her cozy arrangements. There is also Andri, a young Ukrainian man who dreams of meeting a sexy Angliski woman, his friend Tomash, an older Ukrainian man with a hopeless crush on Yola, a pious Malawian boy, and two Chinese girls. The workers live together in two overcrowded caravans, one for men, one for women, on a hillside above the fields. Their communal shower doesn't work. The toilet is locked at night. They have to pay for their accommodation and provisions. Luwika takes us into the point of view of the farm's owner, Farmer Leaping, to show us how the system works. He and his wife, Wendy, have set up a series of fake companies which deduct the workers' expenses in food and provisions from their wages. The beauty of it, Leaping thinks, is that half of what you fork out in wages you can claw back in living expenses. The Leapings congratulate themselves on their financial acuity. They know that their system is even more exploitative than that of neighboring farmers, but they reassure themselves that their workers have better conditions on the Leapings farm than they could enjoy in their own countries. Farmer Leaping is also pleased with his side arrangement with Yola, she sleeps with him in return for certain perks. Irina finds herself having to dodge the attentions of Vok, whose plan gradually becomes clear, he wants to lure Irina into prostitution. Andri offers to protect her, but Irina is scornful of her fellow countrymen. I haven't come all this way to spend my time fending off the advances of a miner from Donbass. Tired of trying to persuade Irina, Vok comes to take her by force. Meanwhile, another drama is unfolding on the farm. Wendy Leaping catches her husband and Yola in flagranti. Distraught, she runs over farmer Leaping with his red sports car. The police are called, and the migrants scatter, commandeering the caravans they live in, a battered Land Rover, and the farm's dog, Dog. Andri and Irina are separated, so Andri sets off to find her, taking Tomash with him. Tomash drops out of the quest to work in a chicken processing factory, Buttercup Meadow Farm Fresh Poultry, and Lewicka takes the opportunity to portray the savage conditions under which livestock are killed and packaged. Andre presses on in search of Irina, dreaming of taking her to live in Sheffield, which he pictures as a place of palaces and bougainvillea. Along the way, the migrants encounter people who either exploit or help them from across the spectrum of British life, yuppies, environmental activists, miners, and recruitment consultants, men with mobile phones who promise to find the migrants' work. The Chinese girls trust one of these men, Vitaly, to take them overseas to a new life, it is clear to the reader that they will be sold into prostitution on arrival. Irina and Andri, however, avoid these pitfalls and are reunited. Falling in love, they decide to make a life together in England, Maybe he and Irina could stay in Sheffield and find jobs for themselves, 
and maybe he would even go to college and train to be an engineer. He would buy a mobile phone, not for doing business, but to talk to his friends, and at weekends they would come to a bar like this, and drink and laugh. However, they know they will never truly belong in English society, their world is too different. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.